Hey guys, how are you all doing? I was just watching my previous video I put up uh, 10 hours ago. Um, I sounded like crap, didn't I? <laughs> Feeling a little bit better. I didn't go to athletics training uh, this afternoon, dash this evening, so I recuperated and Feeling a little bit better. Look, I've got Archon up here. Obviously, uh, it featured in my live trading. Close that. Sorry about that. I really should turn the notifications off because one thing I do really do a lot is watch a lot of YouTube, especially during the session. I have it in the background just to keep me, I wouldn't say preoccupied. I just like background noise. I'm someone that likes the TV on or something when I'm doing, you know, like my like chores. I was cleaning the house today. So. Um, <clears throat> anyway, all right, so look, Archon, I'm just looking, there's no, you know, PR out quite yet, and they did bring out one yesterday morning pretty late, five minutes before market open, so I will, I will be watching this one, uh, top percentage gain, it's okay, EZS, well, 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 pretty good volume, I don't, love Archon right now because of the, the volume is pretty low and you find if the volume is quite good there's a catalyst on news like from the company PR from you know like an external source is okay that's you know but and if it's in a hot sector as well those sort of three and good price action like it was when it broke out through 340 is what you want to sort of look at the, the other reason why I did take the trade is because I hadn't really charted it properly I didn't know where resistance was there wasn't a lot there and I wasn't prepared enough and I was too conservative but anyway let's have a look at AUZS I might not be able to talk too much guys I'm still I did have a rest today as well I want to try and catch at least to uh, an hour and a half into the session is what I normally like to do We've got a few things on tomorrow morning. Had a few things on today as well. I, uh, I did have a rest. You just find yourself busy, 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 busy. There is news out here. Stonebridge Biofarm renounces acquisition of the US and Canadian rights to uh, McRylan. Okay, interesting. That was at 7 a.m. So that's some significant news that. All right. Okay. So there is news on this. It was interesting. I might bring this up. Let's see if it loads. It might. You blow my nose as well. Um. Look, I just looking at everything else. The internet's not running super well, so I might go over this and then. I had a pretty large bump that I burst at, so I wasn't headbutting anything. That's why that's there. I was curious, like, why does Scott have this hole in his head? That's why, yes, yeah, what I mean, guys, this is what I'm dealing with. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, we've got a pretty big article here. Uh -huh. Okay, so... These guys, the first and only FDA approved oral drug indicated for the diagnosis of adult growth hormone deficiency, a rare endocrine disorder. McLaren's a Stonebridge second commercial product, expands the company's rare endocrine disease portfolio and complements its late stage clinical development program for Rico Lake, Rico Relive. Sorry, I'm really, <laughs> I really feel like shit. <laughs> That's some big old names. I'm not going to try and read that out. That's not going to happen. Um, all right, so they expand their structured financing facility with CIG to support the anticipated commercial ones. Okay, look, so this is some interesting news. Oh, this is pretty good. All right, so they've got FDA approval and then... EZS have acquired them. I'm just trying to read into this. Yep, nice. So they've, they've acquired it. The significant unmet need diagnosis and treatment. Okay, so typically caused by injury or 
and so up to the Pachuri clan that often leads to my uh no my mum has uh she has an issue with her thyroid so it's it's pretty common it's pretty common she takes drugs for it so just throwing out personal information there but I it's I'm reading this and it is relevant you know it's a you know, and it really throws you out. You feel terrible if you're not on medication. Okay. Anyway, I want to read that, but my throat's hurting when I talk, so I'm just going to close that down. But AEZS is definitely one to watch. That's what I would call solid news. You know, when you've got an acquisition like that, it's not just like PR, like um, like Long Island ICT changes their name to like Long Island Blockchain or whatever they did. Um, you know, something crazy like that. So that's something significant, not related to blockchain. Obviously, it's not one of those hot hot sectors. It's biopharma, so uh, it's interesting. Um, is that what they they do? Biotechnology, biopharma. I might have made that thing up. Just then, part of me. It's like my brain has been like mixed around in a blender and I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm just going to have a little bit more of this. Anyway, just looking at that price action, that's pretty good. Volume is pretty good too. NURO, that one's got my attention as well. The AZS might, just because it's like that and it, it is good news, but sometimes it takes a little while for you know the market to absorb that. So uh, we'll wait and see. It's not a hot sector though, so that's something to take into consideration. That things might move a bit slower because it is you know it's it's good for the company, but it's not like blockchain and you know we've got these lazy speculator type moves that you know people just jump on and it's crazy. So um, strategic collaboration to develop and expand access to Quarrel. Okay, so it's it's these seem to be it's a drug company. Medical instruments. Okay. I have to blow my nose soon, but I want to finish on Archon, <laughs> AZS and N U R O. Uh, my size isn't isn't even up. That's why I like to do yeah, the, the two watch lists, which would be like a recap of last night. Because if I do do market close, um, which is uh, 5 a.m. Perth time, it closes, so I get up at like 4.15. I don't do a video after because I'm exhausted and I'm you know not really coherent. So because I wake up, I just get on the charts. I'm just, you know, it takes me a few minutes to just get calibrated again and then I haven't really traded market close. It's been flat. Every time I've been up, there's been it's been uneventful. But I like to try and do that. The more charts I see, the better it is for my pattern recognition and whatnot. So I've been watching a lot of video lessons on uh, dip buys as well. Um, but I like this. It's really found some nice support in the 280s. Um, you know, potential dip buy down here, maybe in the 230s. Maybe even a bit lower where it started sort of running. Believe. 